Hello? Yes? Did somebody say... Sim racing stewards? No? no? Oh, well, I guess I'm just, uh... Hearing things again. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this series, basically I go through the Sim Racing Stewards subreddit, which will be down below in the description, and I scroll through and give my opinion on all the crashes that are there and who's at fault. And then you guys go in the comments and tell me how wrong I am. I will get a police officer. You will be sorted out. It's a good format. I like it. A bit more than this attempt at trying to go blonde again. Look at me. I'm all kinds of different colours. One thing for certain, though, is I am definitely going through my midlife crisis. Which isn't good because I'm only 32. Anyway, my immortality aside, I want to go see some fake crashes. I go. So first up, we have a who is at fault. The Ferrari is lapped and I'm in the Aston. Let's play and see what happens. So we're at Spa going through Eau Rouge and Radion. Very fast part of the circuit here. Ferrari is in the pit lane and then comes across at the last second. Yeah, okay. This is a fairly easy one. So if you're unfamiliar with the Spa pit lane, you can see it sort of comes out here along the side. Um, very easy to actually crash. It's very bumpy out here. But our Ferrari's managed to get out of the pit lane. And now it's up to him to get up to racing speed, which he hasn't done. For whatever reason, he's forgot that the right-hand pedal actually applies the throttle and accelerates the car. And, and instead employs the incredibly sensible tactic of sitting in the middle of the course, well off racing speed. So we're in the Aston Martin. We see a gap here on the inside because the Ferrari has drifted out. So we take the space that's there. We try and go to the inside. Ferrari goes, oh no, panics at the last second, pulls back over to the right-hand side. We then eventually react to that, albeit a bit too late. The Ferrari actually comes back over again to try and get out of the way and causes this crash. Um, this is a really classic case of one, driving your mirrors, and two, not getting back up to racing speed. When you join a live racing circuit, cars are going at racing speed. If you're trundling around on the pit limiter, expect to get rear-ended. So I sentence the Ferrari to 1,000 years dungeon. Uh, next, <laughs> I thought I said German then. <laughs> that was German during F123. Anyway, F123 clip, so we already know everyone thinks they're Max Verstappen. Let's see what happens here. We're on board the Aston Martin. Germa in front. We've just started the race, I think. On the outside there. A little bit of side-by-side -side contact. Not much. Now we're going up towards uh, the next corner. It's a right-hander. Oh, we get clipped and then shoved into the wall. Now, this actually happened in real life. Well, kind of anyway. With Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen. With Perez actually coming across and sort of pushing Max onto the grass down towards T1 here. In this instance, it's difficult. It's almost a racing incident, but I'm actually going to put the blame on the Aston Martin, and here's why. I want you guys to keep an eye on that white line at the side of the circuit here. Now, the white line dictates track limits, which these guys don't understand either in real life, but also it's a really good marker to see where the car is moving in relation to the circuit. Now, watch the Aston Martin as we come around this little bend here and its distance to the white line. So we started here at the start of the manoeuvre, and then when we hit the guy on the left here, we're out here somewhere. So I think, I don't know, it's watching it again, I, I'm, I'm inclined to say Aston Martin, but I think what really happened is just the cars came together, which can happen sometimes. So I am actually going to say racing incident, but keep an eye out for each other, for crying out loud. You know, crashing in a straight line is peak F1 2023. Don't do that, it's bad. I haven't got a judgment, but I want to hit something. <laughs> this one is simply called I Am The Orange Car. Good for you, bro. Remaster Max 5s These things are great fun in iRacing, great for learning, uh, understanding basics, oversteer, understeer, all that sort of stuff. We're catching a car in front, we then pulls over to the right-hand side to let us through, and... I think my IQ just lowered a little bit. So what happened here? So this is quite similar to the Assetto Corsa one earlier. This guy is, I think he's just come out of the pit lane. He's very slow. He notices that a car is coming up behind and very kindly gets out of the way. Nice and early, this is predictable. This isn't gonna be scary for us on board as the orange car. Gets on the brakes, gets out of the way. He's offline now. Now he should stay there. For some reason that I cannot fathom, he thinks, actually no, I forgot something there on the racing line. Goes back over to the racing line, gets scared again, starts turning out. And at this point, you know, we're, we're focusing on the corner. And there's a little bit of target fixation going on here. But we just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love iRacing, man. I love iRacing so much. Um, I'm going to put it on this car, uh, on the 
number number 17. I can't even read that from here. Uh, but, but the uh, the Black MX-5, because you moved twice in a breaking zone when you weren't breaking <laughs> and weren't defending. There was just no need for the movement. I understand what I think you were trying to do, which is be kind, get out of the way. Uh, but you failed dismally. That is good old-fashioned iRacing manslaughter. <laughs> you love to see it. Another glorious F1. This guy blamed me for moving under braking and he crashed into and he crashed into me because he lost the concentration. The poster is the blue F1 car. F3 car even. F3 cars. Um, any sort of Formula car in iRacing is just bandit country. Oh, yeah. The Duff Man goes up the inside. Goes wide. That it? No, there's more. That's just like an intent wreck. There, there's there's nothing there. Um, so guy guy I think is salty because he got passed. And this this is actually a good pass. Okay, we'll look at the white line. So a lot of rules in racing say you have to give one car width at least to the car outside. Now that doesn't mean you can come in and chop like that. But he's got space. He's got plenty of space there. And I think what happened here is his brain's just hit. He, he's just shat himself. You know, he's just. I, I see this a lot in iRacing when people have such weird egos that they cannot fathom being overtaken by someone. So when it happens, it's, uh, it's unacceptable. It's a fault of the game. It's a fault of someone else. I don't know. If you look again, so much room on this side. So much room. No issue there at all, in my opinion. But the, the bullshit about this guy losing concentration, like, no, this is like an intentional wreck. You can see because he turns in and then turns out to try and hit you. So for me, this this guy needs to like go on a holiday. He, he, he needs a few weeks off of the eye racing, I think, to reevaluate what a helmet he is. Guilty. No more Tom and Jerry for you. And oh, my guy's written an essay with this one. What's your thoughts on this action? I'm the guy ahead. I break a minimal breaking point at the start of the curb, and he just sends the car and JPEX blame me for breaking there, but then the guy will not make the coins to start breaking. Okay. So this is LMDH. What's that noise? What a weird one. This is really confusing to me, this incident, because uh, th th let's just describe it as we see it. We're with the guy who apparently is the offending party here. Now, the guy in front who wrote this post, he breaks. This guy sort of like goes to the inside, comes back again, breaks. He's, he's braked far before the start of this car. So he's braked even earlier than the car in front here. Then just sort of lets off the throttle. And he you can hear he's back on the throttle here. Like, what are you doing? Um, this just seems like a bit of a helmet move from the, this this fella here. I think what happened is he's gone in like a bit too hot. Um, he's got a bit fixated on the car in front, trying to overtake. Got to the corner and gone, oh, balls, now what do I do? And then just run into someone. And in typical iRacing fashion, he then blames the, <laughs> the other guy. Um, don't be this guy, man. Like, if, if, if you're going to go for an overtake, don't limp dick it, all right? Like, like, th th this is limp dick shit. Like, oh, I don't know. I might go for it. Like, th there's no way. N like, he's turned into committed to the corner. You're not even alongside yet. And then you lunge in, cause an instant, and go, ha, ha, it wasn't my fault. It's what they do in the Formula 1s on the TV. Uh, no, this is stupid. Don't do this. Uh, I sentence you to 50 years of Monza T1. Uh, this one's called, I mean, he deserves a vacation, right? And for those of you not up with the iRacing cool hip lingo, a vacation is he deserves being banned. Let's see if he deserves being banned. Wah! Okay, so we had an incident here. Let's, let's just check this incident now. Seems like... Doesn't seem like a, a purpose, purposeful move to me, but we're going to get another angle. Really? Is this the move you're talking about? No. Oh, no. <laughs> so th this move here is just a racing incident. It's, it, it's more like net code. You see how these cars unload like... The, time, the smallest of taps here, and this car goes round. In real life, um, you'd probably have a bit of a better chance of saving that, to be honest. But that, for me, is just a racing instant. Racing hard, a little bit of contact. It can happen sometimes. The next one, not so much. That was a really nice move. And actually, this guy in front was a bit cheeky. He tried to cut across here at the last second and actually missed 
This already for me is enough cause for concern to give this guy a slap on the wrist. Um, sometimes you'll see, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes one of the live stewards for iRacing will end up in the session. If he saw this, that would, that would already be like a, a DM being like, stop, don't do that. Do that again in your band. But it continues. So bust up again on the next lap. Here's our mate. Just, it's just super unnecessary. There is also, it looks to me like intentional. He is slowing down. I don't know. I I'm interested to see what you think. Do you guys think this is intentional? Because having watched some of the lines from this guy, I'm kind of wondering whether it's just a fat old skill issue and he's made a, albeit a very stupid mistake, which he would still be penalized for. Don't get me wrong. We're just discussing intention here. Um, anyway, yeah, the guy, the guy in this car here, um, if one of the stewards saw that, he'd be getting a ban because it looks intentional. Um, the move before looks intentional as well to defend. Like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it in a, what I assume is like a Ferrari challenge race to go around and drive like this. If you're, in my head, right, if you're taking part in sim racing, you are a racing enthusiast. You must be, right? Or that or a, or some sort of sadist. This is not how you improve and get better. This is how you waste your mum's money by using her credit card to buy tracks and cars. It's not worth it. So number eight Ferrari, I sent the shooter to go all the way back. The Forza Motorsport 4, doesn't it? Oh, this is a Gran Turismo video. Was I, POV the AMG, entitled to space, or did I enter the vortex of danger? I hate that place. So we're with the uh, AMG here. Nice line through this right hand. We're gonna get a good exit through here. We're side by side with the Rothmans every Super, which is already a little bit of a, oh, okay. That's a really good one. So, okay, so first of all, this guy blows this corner altogether. Absolutely ruins it. He's out here thinking, what the hell? Uh, what, what, why are you out there, bro? We've taken advantage of that as the AMG. We're up the inside. We're now significantly alongside, although, of course, we are on different parts of the circuit because we're taking different racing lines, owing to the fact we didn't ruin that last corner. The Supra here is compromised. He has to now take a slower line through this corner, tighter line, because that's where he is on circuit. He kind of doesn't do that though, and ends up driving us towards the edge of the circuit here. We have no choice as AMG but to turn. We're going to get a penalty if we go over here. It's not our fault. The oh, Supra no. though doesn't allow us that space no. and gets biffed off. Um, that's what I would call a racing incident because the Supra did it to himself. I'm very much a believer of if the offending party suffers from the incident, and there's no damage the other way, then it's it, it's been resolved itself, if you understand my meaning. So the stewards will probably have a word for Supra after the race for not giving space there, but yeah. That, what do you expect when you close close the door that hard when you have a car alongside? So um, racing incident, Supra, check your mirrors. Who is that fault? I don't know. We're in a set of course up. We're at Laguna Seca. We've got no game audio. Oh, this corner sucks for overtaken. Uh, okay. Let's have another look at that again. This is a tough one because it just feels like one of those ones where cars come together. Ultimately, the, the 24 is the one that initiates this contact. Um, he has made the overtake successfully. He's by here. It's his corner, so to speak. Um, but this is something that I think is unfortunately perpetuated by F1 and their really weird rule set when it comes to overtaking. You can't just run people off the course ever. That's not all right. It's not okay. You can hurt someone doing that in real life. In Sim, don't matter. You just hurt their ego a bit. But I'd say it's on the 24. He had the pass made, but then opened the steering while the 29 was still there on the outside. It isn't one of those things where I'd be like, give that guy a big slap on the wrist. It might just be like a warning for the 24 for that one. But I would place fault on him in this regard. So 24, you are fast, but be nice to, be nice to the other Mazdas, all right? They're all just trying to get on with you. You're so close. All right, dude, you're fully on the shit list now. Sorry, I'm not sorry. So here we have Formula Vs at Okiyama. Um, this car is not very fast. It's very close racing, all about Sipstream. And we are side by side with the car going down the back straight. Love VR, you can get so close. You can get close, yeah. Sweet. Unfortunately, too close. And contact, number 10's gone. He ain't going to be in any more rush hours. And the car's binds are crashing to us as well. I'll be surprised if our car is still in one piece after that. 
Uh, gonna try and continue now. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not sorry. This is some great sound effects. So, um, number three car. Looks like he's pinching us a bit to the inside. Um, big pinch. You've got a lot of track over there. So I don't know why you're doing this. You've got a Carlo on our outside as well. We come across take the line and yeah, contact. This would be a, a better view for us to see who's at fault. Again, I'm going to use my old fashioned white line rule here. The number eight, number eight is coming across. Take the line here. We're, we're all moving across. And he comes across some more. Um, I would put this on the number eight because whilst it wasn't a big move, you can see slightly as we go up to the corner, he's pinching, pinching, pinching. Whereas this number 12 is actually just going in a straight line. So whilst definitely not intentional, it's one of those things that comes with close racing like this. And when you are moving across in the straight, you have to make sure there's no one there in your way. Because if you collect everyone like you do here, you don't, you don't collect one or two, you collect three cars there with one move. So number eight, Definitely guilty. Three times murder count. You need to be checking your mirrors on the straights. Definitely on the shit list. This is actually a nice one. Uh, I like this. Can you comment on this? I want to learn from it anonymously so it remains fair and neutral because it's always quite tempting to put, well, I'm this guy and I think this happened. But actually just presenting the incident without any of that makes it a lot easier to, to look at and be impartial, I think. For me, I don't care. But for others, maybe it's, it's easier that way. Anyway. Automobilista 2. We're at the Nürburgring, the Nordschleifer. We're in the slipstream of the car in front. We look to the inside. There's space there. It's then cut off at the last second. Let's have a look at it again. Hmm. So the line here, I'd say, is a little... Mm, I think this goes on the racing line. That's a really tough one. Okay. Let's start from the start. We're on board in this Janetta. We have a decent run out of this left-hander up towards the Flu Platz now. And we're looking at this space. This space is empty, unoccupied, so we're going to put our car in it to run overtake. We look to the left-hand side. This guy now starts to wander across the road ever so slightly. Now, this, this is actually a form of defending. I, I call it just being lazy and sort of hanging around in the, in the middle of the road. The guy can't just drive through you there. He has to respect that you're there on in the circuit you can take that line if you want it's just not the traditional racing line we then go to the inside now at this point we're alongside we've got a little bit of our car there and he the number 60 needs to respect that that's happened however he does not continues on his racing line causes a little bit of contact in front of my car and puts it into the wall so on the basis that the movement of the car in front in the puma caused this incident i'm going to say it is on this number 60 <laughs> guilty but I'm going to also put in there that that is a very low percentage move. I understand you want to get the move done early because being stuck behind someone slow is the worst. But when the gap looks like this, when it looks like this, you have to take a step back and go, is it worth me putting my car in there when oh so very close to me is a barrier that could damage me and ruin my entire race? So whilst not your fault, I think maybe not the most intelligent move to make. Why are these all spa? Every, this is like a spa Frank Michon special. Fighting for the lead. Was he allowed more space or should he have backed off? Let's find out. We're watching on the mobile phone. Also, I want to say fighting for the lead doesn't mean anything. I think people put that in their posts as to be like, it's a, it's a close fight. It's a big fight. It's like, mm, no, it's the way you look at an incident. It doesn't matter where you are in the field doesn't matter. So Spa yet again in the slipstream going up the hill up towards Blanchimont, one of the fastest corners on the circuit. It's flat through here. We've passed. Round we go. Guy goes off there and then... Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. So here's what I think happened here and it's kind of hard to tell because we've only got one camera angle. So we've passed here at this point. We've passed, got the inside line. The corner is pretty much 100% ours. Um... We then go to take the racing line. You can see in the mirror, just about, Joey! CSI zoom in on that shit. But you can see he's gone wide here. So now he's gone off the circuit. Now, I get to play one of my favorite rules now, which sort of makes it a lot easier to determine, is when you go off the circuit, it's up to you to rejoin in a safe manner. However, he does not. He comes straight back onto the circuit, crashes into the side of us, and takes us both out the race. Could you have given him more space? You're racing hard, I think. I think you gave him about as much space as he needed. 
And at that point in the overtake, the move was made. He should, he should have just tucked back in behind and then maybe gone for a move down into the bus stop. But he decided to try and hang it around the outside. And then as a result, unsafe rejoin cause you both to crash out. So I'm sorry to say that a very bad boy has been a very bad boy. That feels really powerful. Anyway, yeah, gooey. Don't do that. Black and yellow car reckons I, the yellow and blue car, took him out and can't race. I reckon he turned in on me. It was good racing till then, so shame I had to end like this. It is a shame when that happens because people get people get irate. In, I get irate with racing. You know, ad adrenaline's up, but I always think um, as I've got older, it's good to try and step back a bit and not be quite as uh, aggressive. It's not as fun that way. Anyway, around the outside. We're side by side here. Really nice racing so far on the inside. And he reckons he got turned in on. Mm, hard to tell. Do we have a better angle than that? Yellow car's on the inside line. We're turning in. I mean, you're racing really hard at this point. And if I look here, your the turning point for the 11 is a lot sharper and the turning point for the free. So I have to wonder what is the trajectory of this car because this guy seems to be on the ideal racing line, whereas this guy is turning in almost beyond that. If you're going to put blame on anyone, it'd be on the 11, I think, here because this guy can't physically go any further right at this point. Um, but in my mind, that's just hard racing. A little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, it happens sometimes. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think that every incident needs to be a massive deal where there's massive penalties handed out because, again, that's kind of just like F1. But here, I just I just genuinely think it's just hard racing. But if, if there's going to be blame anywhere, it would be on your 11. But I'm, you, you, you're not getting judged for that. You get away scot-free. It was good racing until then. You guys shouldn't get so irate about that. Just enjoy the fact that you got to race that closely. Oh, we've got eye racing and uh, and the Merc. And the uh, the post just says, activate windows. So the post says, um, does this look intentional? I said it looks pretty intentional. And the reason why I'm laughing is because it's intentional and he doesn't even do it right. There are, there's no lower IQ of driver in iRacing than someone who tries to intent wreck you and misses. I'm looking at you, Scott Speed. So he sort of like backs off. He's like, he's using the halo as a bit of a crosshair. So he's like, right, I'm going to get this guy. Dives him to the grass. Forgets that the grass does not hold the same grip as the tarmac. Immediately loses the car. Watches you go off into the distance while this guy goes into the barrier, wondering why he spent £12 on a car that evidently he has no interest in learning to drive. I'm, I'm sending this guy all the way back to the original Gran Turismo because he's got a lot of learning to do before he gets into someone like iRacing. Off you go. But yes, guys, that was another episode of the glorious Sim Racing Stewards. And as always, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on any of the instances you've seen here today. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you not care? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, as well, on your way out, I'd very much appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe as well as tapping that little bell notification icon as well. And as always, a massive thank you to all the channel members and patrons for helping to support the channel and help me go racing in real life. More content of that coming up very soon. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you all next time.